Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Demco Stay in Play Supplemental Braking System with the wireless coach link monitor. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure uh, that this is gonna work for you. So before we get too carried away, kind of talking about the braking system and how it works and, and everything else like that, I figured it'd be useful just to kind of touch base and refresh ourselves on the main parts that we're gonna to need to flat tow our Jeep down the road in the first place. All the main components are gonna consist of five different parts. So the first thing is gonna be your base plate. And what this is gonna do is provide you with a solid and reliable connection point. That way you can hook your tow bar up. The tow bar is gonna be the second component and that's gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of your Jeep to the back of your motorhome. The third main component will be safety cables, and those are pretty straightforward. Uh, those are going to be there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. They're going to keep everything paired together. The fourth main component will be tow bar wiring, and what that's going to do is transfer the lighting signals from the back of your coach to the back of your Jeep, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component will be a supplemental braking system. And what that'll do is apply the brakes in your Jeep whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome, helping bring you to a more predictable and complete stop. But with that out of the way, I just wanna kinda talk about the different types of braking systems uh, that are out there. That way you don't waste your time and watch a video on something that's not even gonna work for you, right? You wanna get what you need, uh, the right thing, the first time. So with this system, stay in play, this is a permanent type braking system, so it's gonna be essentially permanently installed on your Jeep. And it's gonna work uh, with motorhomes that have you know, the classic hydraulic brakes, right? Um, if your motorhome has air brakes, uh, there's another system that is specially designed uh, for motorhomes with air brakes. And the one that we really like here, uh, do a lot of them, have a lot of good luck with them. Uh, it's called the Demco Air Force One. Um, super user-friendly, um, simple, reliable, just works, flat out works. So um, if your motor home has air brakes and you're wanting another permanent type system, definitely check that one out. Um, with that said, uh, then you kind of have, um, I guess you could call it a hybrid. It works with motorhomes with air brakes, uh, works with motorhomes with hydraulic brakes, and it's a more portable type system. Um, that's the Blue Ox Patriot 3. So that one you, uh, you know, you have to set up and take it out every time you want a flat toe. Not really a huge deal though. It's, it's about as easy uh, as it can get. You set it in there, lock the arm onto your brake pedal, a couple wires plug in, and that's really all there is to it. Um, so that, that could be a good option for those of you that maybe change vehicles a lot. Um, change motorhomes a lot um, or don't really flat till that often or, or if you just don't flat out want a permanent type braking system installed on your vehicle. Um, so there's a few different options for you. As far as the stay in play goes, uh, this is probably my favorite permanent type braking system in terms of um, uh, you know what you can use with RVs that have hydraulic brakes. Uh, we have done a ton of them here. I've probably done 25 or 30 of them easy, and they just work. Rarely do we run into any issues with them. Uh, easy to set up. You know, once they're installed, essentially, you don't really have to do anything. You'll have a cable here that goes to the your motorhome's hitch um, that you have to do, and turn the system on by flipping a switch. And that's it. And unfortunately, what we usually like to do is have a motorhome here. Um, so really paint a good picture for you, but we have bad weather outside today. So just kind of trying to make do. So uh, bear with us a little bit. But, uh, you know, there's, so you have your stay in play, um, kind of your classic one. And then you have the wireless coach link. And that's exactly what this one is. And so what the, the wireless coach link, it's going to give you this monitor. And what this does is plug into your uh, motorhome's dashboard into a 12 volt outlet like this. Just about every motorhome has one of these. And it's going to uh, 
send a signal up here letting you know when the brakes are being applied uh, in the Jeep. So you can really keep a close eye on things. You kind of know what's going on uh, whenever you're flat toned down the road. And to me, uh, you know, this can go a long way, give you a little more peace of mind and a little more confidence whenever you're flat towing. So a moment ago, I mentioned how easy this is to set up whenever you're ready to flat tow. So we talked about hooking that cable up and then I said, you're gonna have to activate the system. So on these Jeeps, you can mount up the controller uh, here on the driver's side on the kick panel. And all you're gonna have to do is reach up there, turn it on. One of the really nice things about this setup is the fact that it is a proportional type braking system. So more or less what that means is uh, your Jeep's braking pressure is gonna match that uh, braking pressure that you apply here in the motorhome whenever you're slowing down. And so that's gonna transition into a uh, smooth uh, stopping experience, right? Uh, to kind of elaborate on that, how it's gonna work, and give you an example, let's just say if you're going down the road, maybe there's a, a stoplight up ahead and we're just kind of coasting to a stop, maybe foot halfway on the brake, something like that. Uh, the brake in the Jeep is gonna match that pressure. On the other hand, let's say if we're on the highway, uh, maybe there's an accident up ahead or, or some bad traffic and, and we really have to stand on that brake pedal and come to uh, an emergency stop, the Jeep is gonna do the same thing. So like I said, that's gonna, uh, make a smooth stopping experience and one that is a little more predictable and can give you a little more confidence. Well, hey guys, we're here with Larry who just brought his vehicle in and his motorhome, of course, to get a flat tow set up. So uh, Larry, you kind of mentioned before that you guys did have a trailer dolly and that was always kind of a pain to mess with, wasn't it? Because it was just kind of big in the way. That right, kind of thing. Correct. Cool, Moving awesome. It around, it was, yeah, kind of a pain. Yeah, so um, this way, obviously, we're making that a lot easier for ourselves. Our tow bar is going to be folded up close to the vehicle or the motorhome, I should say, right. making it a lot easier to storage, a lot easier to get out. And of course, when we start taking all this undone, our tabs aren't going to be as gaudy in the front. You know, we're not going to have, and of course, security is always concerned when we're doing anything like this. So nicer that it's a little bit more low key, low profile, which is great. So um, have you ever flat towed before then, no. really? Not ever, really? No. Cool. Um, so, I mean, the concept's pretty simple, right? We're keeping it flat and we're towing it. That's, as the name suggests, um, what we're doing with that, basically, we're eliminating any of that kind of chucking that you might originally see from like dollies and stuff like that, exactly right, because we're keeping it level, which is great. And these arms are gonna be locking themselves in for us. And that way, the car's gonna be basically following right behind your motorhome, okay. especially compared to like, it's a little different than a trailer. You know what I mean? You always kind of have to watch what it's gonna be doing on the back end. This guy just tracks really nice behind the motorhome, makes it a lot easier to drive, especially pulling it in in our kind of recreational areas. Do it's they, not going to be as a pain. Do these always stay out or do they like yep. piston articulate so, in and out? So they are going to be locking in place for you, which oh. is great. Now they are going to have a little bit of movement, but especially when you are going to be going to do like unlatch these guys, this is non-binding. Okay. If you compare that to like binding tow bars, basically what ends up happening with those guys is they have a little button that you have to push to release it. What's nice with these, they're not locked in right now because we haven't really pulled it forward, but I'm gonna be able to pull this lever back, pop it, and we're gonna feel that kind of give just like that. And that's basically unbinding itself, making it a lot easier to actually get it undone. So, and kind of talking about that, when we're doing our initial, like once we got everything set up, there are a few little kind of tips and tricks to keep in mind. So the first one's gonna be, as we are pulling out, Luckily for us, we have a lot of little left and rights we're gonna have to make to get out of E-Trailer here. However, say you're at like a, like a campsite, you load it all up, you get it nice and even and lined up. That's also a really nice step we're gonna go over about getting it set up. But as we're taking off, we're gonna wanna do a little bit of left and right on our steering wheel. And what that's doing for us is actually making sure that these guys are extending their full. Because when it's up happening, right, we're going along the highway, our Jeep's behind us. Yes, we're gonna be applying the brakes because we have that stay and play duo here, which is giving you that brake control, which is great. But what we don't want is one of these arms locking and one of them not. Because what can end up happening there is all that force gets transferred to one arm and then that can end up bending your tow bar. So that's why we do that left to that right action. And we'll go over it later as we get in the motor home as well. But that's because we want to make sure that we are distributing that force between both of the arms. Otherwise, you'd run into that issue that we were just talking about. So, yeah. It's probably important enough after you go a few miles that you should just pull over somewhere and come back here and look? It's never a bad idea always to check, you know, but I think especially once you've done it twice, three oh, times, okay. you're, you're gonna feel it and, and you're gonna see it too if it's tracking well with you. And it's really not much. I mean, we're talking an eighth on the steering wheel and all that's really doing is getting that extra little extension that we're looking for. Cause these are gonna naturally extend as we pull. They're gonna go to their max length, right? And it's just getting that lock almost in place. So, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a little. Hard to, 
kind of show as we're at a standstill. Okay. But yeah, so why don't we go over a little bit of what we got working with us, right? Okay. So um, we have ourselves our tow bar actually. So this is the main component, right? You have the Falcon all terrain here from Roadmaster, which is great. Um, again, we kind of mentioned it, it's non-binding. All that really is, is you're getting this lever action here, making it a lot easier to actually get those binds undone. Okay. Um, like I said before, there's usually a button there on the side, a real pain to get to, takes a lot of effort, and then you end up getting a lever anyways that you always kind of have to store somewhere. So um, they all, the installers always like, this is the way to go. So that's why we always throw people that way as well. Um, and then we just have, of course, we have a base plate here inside the Jeep. And that's kind of giving us our tab extension that we're seeing here. So it's kind of underneath your bumper. And so we have our hook elements here. So our tow bars extend out. And then we're going to have these little pins that are holding us in place. So, and then one thing that's great about our Falcon here, you do have all this wire housing and your safety cable housing. So a lot of times what you end up seeing is these safety cables just drag on the ground or this umbilical cable drags on the ground and that can lead to wear and tear. Eventually you got to get them replaced, right? So what's nice about the Falcon, we're going to be storing that inside here. That's not going to be in the way. And then of course our safety cables on each side are for safety, right? right. In case something goes wrong, we want to make sure our Jeep's not leaving so we can undo those as well. And since we're just gonna be working right to left here, this is gonna be our breakaway switch. So if I were to pull this guy right now, we're gonna have, and if it was actually running, what ends up happening there, we're gonna have connection points that actually get made. And since there's nothing blocking that, that's gonna activate your brakes inside your Jeep. So worst case scenario, this thing comes undone, all the rest of the systems fail. You still have this breakaway switch, which is gonna activate your brakes. That way we're not hurting anybody on the road. Okay. That way everybody gets home safe, which is great. So always make sure we are replacing that. And there is just gonna be those two little tabs right there. You just gotta get those guys in place to actually work. Just like so. So making sure that's in place when you are taking when your- When you're driving it, you always leave that in. Oh yeah, 100%. And even when, even when you're not utilizing it, that's just, that's that mechanism. That's the fail safe right there. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So okay. we can keep that guy undone and he can just kind of sit right here. And if you wanted to, you know, you can clip him anywhere. That way he doesn't go dangling anywhere you don't need him. Okay. So here's gonna be your electrical hookup, right? And so you also have that, I think it's the Demco Stay and Play Duo. Uh -huh. um, so this is basically getting you your brakes. This is getting you your brake control, which is great. And you also have the battery charge line kit, I believe, which right. is keeping our battery actually going because we're still using that battery for our brakes, um, activating um, your actual stay and play as well. Oh, okay. So say you go for six to eight hours on the road somewhere, you get back and now your Jeep's dead. That'd be no good. So that, that charge line kit is basically a trickle charger, utilizing your RV's power, maintaining your battery. Okay. And that way, when you get to your campsite, you got no trouble and your okay. Jeep's ready to go. So pretty simple there. How this guy works, you're gonna have this little notch here at the top. Uh -huh. um, it, if you look on the inside, it's a little deceiving. So an easy way is just making sure that little tab right there is the actually top. pointed up. And you just kind of want to work it out just like so. Okay. Make sure that cap goes back in place okay. and then walk this guy back. I will say this guy can also kind of drag. So even like when you're done storing it, when we fold it up, getting it somewhere it can store. Otherwise you, you can start. Dirt. Yeah, yeah exactly. And just check that too each time. Um, like I kind of looked in there and there was just a little guy hanging on the edge. Make sure you brush that off. Otherwise, you know what I mean? It can get stuck in there and then it takes way more time to get it undone, okay. which can be a pain. So I'm just going to undo the rest of these guys here then, and we can kind of walk through this setup together. How about that? And uh, these guys are pretty simple. And one thing uh, we can maybe talk about afterwards here too, I know you mentioned security was kind of a concern for you with the trailer dolly. Um, one thing I might suggest too is getting some little locks here. So you can actually end up locking at least maybe one of your tow bars here or a second one. And the big one I would look at is maybe right. going to be a hitch lock here on your RV because this kind of like I've had had one on the other one with the, to the key. Yep, That's just like that. About. Yep, okay. and that way you're just getting a little bit of. I mean, any any lock is only deterrent, but it does go a long way a lot of times of okay. you know okay. making sure we leave your stuff where you have it. So yeah, and then uh, I just want to bring these guys in up all the way, and we'll kind of walk over putting this guy up. Okay. Now for these guys as well. Um, you could end up leaving them here. They have a little bit of a rattle to them. I would suggest pulling that pin, turning it, walk it right out, and that way you can store it either in your RV or your Jeep, and then this is what you end up looking with. So you don't really have anything too crazy. So you wanna go ahead and take that guy out for me, and then we can uh, maybe go in the reverse order of this guy. Sweet. So real simple. Um, you know, they look harder to, than they are, and then you just slide them right in, turn them, and then replace that pin, and you're good to go.
Yep. So, and then when our tow bar is not in use, we can kind of bring them together here and we can bring them straight up. And then you're gonna have that little latch right there. Okay. Basically, you're just gonna walk that up just like so, then take it off to the side. And uh, yeah, like I was telling your wife earlier, this is how it's gonna store. It's pretty nice because it's not really adding really too much length okay. to your RV to begin with. And especially with that tow, like the Defender or that cover becomes a great way of just protecting it on the back here, which is awesome. So one thing we always wanna do though, when we are setting up our Jeep, um, you always wanna make sure you have your emergency brake on. Um, okay. And what's that has happened with that? Right here, we're on level ground, we're in a great spot. If you were to find yourself on a slight gradient, if you're in a driveway or something, all of a sudden we might get a little forgetful and then we're catching our Jeep as it goes down. So okay. um, Understood. you could probably get a little closer than we are too, obviously, right? Cause these are gonna extend out as we drive forward. So if you're having that trouble, just hop back in the Jeep, make sure your tow bar's out of the way, pull forward a little bit more, have the missus kind of tell you where you're and at, put the brake back. and then okay. put the brake back on. So here, we're doing it in a controlled environment. Of course, we gotta make sure we are being okay. safe as we're out on the, road, on the road. So there's that little pin for you. Yep, there we go, and that's locked in. So now our now our bars are in place, which is great. Do you normally, I went this way, do you normally, does it, does it, does it don't really, really matter. matter. Wherever you really want it, whatever's easier for you to access would probably be the way I'd go about it. Um, they're gonna do the same either way. It's just, I put mine on the outside because it's a little easier to get to rather than, you know, okay. scrounge okay. on the okay. inside. Understood. And then we can go ahead and take our safety cables here. And that might be part of the determining factor too, right? If it's getting in the way of your clevises here, you might move it but otherwise you're in a good spot. And then I'll let you take that guy in and that's basically gonna give us all our power. This is the pin on top. Yep, make that little guy on top. And then you just kinda of wanna work it in. There you go. And as you get it into um, okay. getting it out, it can be a little easier just to kinda of double hook there. Okay. But just a little tips and tricks, so. Okay. But yeah, so we're all hooked up now on here other than our breakaway. Awesome. You just go easily yep. under? Yep, just under, and then clip it to that guy. There we go, we're good to go. And um, kind of walking that guy back to here, what we've done is we've taken this uh, guy right here and clipped it on. Uh -huh. Sometimes people have trouble with their hitches. Yours was good enough to go ahead and just go around that tow hook, which is great. So we're not too worried about it. I like wrapping it here though, just cause I know it's extra secure. And then this is what's gonna be pulling that over here. Okay. So that's the only reason we did that. So yeah, so you're all hooked up now. Really, now what we got to do is actually hop inside the Jeep and we're going to need to actually set this ready for tow mode. So why don't we grab your vehicle's owner's manual guide and we'll do that really quick. Well, I showed Larry here how to get his Jeep actually set up for uh, actually getting in the flat tow position, making sure we have no issues. Of course, let's always make sure we are using our own vehicle's owner's manual guide. That way, we're always being safe and sound out there on the roads. Larry, any last little questions you have for me or anything no, like that? No, awesome, no, no, no. cool. Well, he's also got the Demco Stay and Play Duo, so we're just making sure that that actually is right. activated inside the Jeep. We double check that with our sensors up front. And Larry here's ready to go and rock and roll, have some fun. So that's what we're all about. Well, thank Appreciate you again, Larry. Appreciate it. it, and you have a good one. Okay, I will. But other than that, at the end of the day, a uh, really nice braking system. It's one you definitely can't go wrong with. Uh, it's tried and true and just, just flat out works. Uh, as far as the installation goes, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's relatively complicated. You know, a lot of wiring, um, and it's definitely going to take you some time. So uh, set a little bit aside to get it done. Um, if you'd like to follow along, and see how I did it, feel free to. We'll go ahead and get it installed now. Yeah. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the front of our Jeep and we need to mount up uh, our major components. One of them being our breakaway switch, which is this piece here. And with this, I simply just used a self-tapping screw and secured it up into our bumper beam there. So it gives us a good solid uh, anchoring point and this will work out real well. The two wires that come off the back, I just kind of pushed them through this gap, and we'll get to that later. But uh, what we'll do now is mount up our main operating unit, which is gonna be located right here in this area. So this is our main operating unit, and what I did on this side, there's a flange here that's usually straight out. I bent that flat, and I was able to kind of jam this up in there and I used three self-tapping screws to secure it to this beam, and it is rock solid. 
I did on, on this side of it, there's a small opening that we can see and I used one more screw as well, uh, just to have kind of both sides covered. Uh, we'll take a look at that now, but uh, this is the gist of it. This is how I mounted up our unit. So here you can kind of see that flange, right, from our main operating unit and how we bolted it, that drove or forced pressure up onto our bumper beam. And just to help, you know, keep it that way, I used another self-tapping screw. I was able just to catch the lip of it there, but got enough, got a good bite, and that'll keep everything in place. So what we can do now is get some of our wires hooked up. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the blue and brown wire from our main operating unit. So those are going to get hooked up to our breakaway switch. So the blue wire from the main operating unit, that gets connected to the black wire from the breakaway switch. The brown wire from our operating unit, you're going to connect that to the orange wire from the breakaway switch. But with this, I did something a little bit different. Um, I actually took the remaining portion of our brown wire because uh, I cut quite a bit of it off since our connections are right here and put both bare ends of the wire, so the brown wire and the orange wire, into one end of the buck connector. That brown wire is going to get routed up towards the battery. So I just took the wire, ran it underneath our operating unit, up through here, and up through an opening uh, into the engine compartment. So here up top, here's our brown wire. And I simply just kind of ran it along through here where it comes out. And I strip back the insulation. And that's because we're going to hook this up to the fuse holder. So uh, make sure the fuse is not installed. That's the very last thing we'll do once we have everything hooked up. One end of the fuse holder, you're going to crimp on a ring terminal. The other end, we're going to strip back. Those wires a good twist. We're going to put on a buck connector. So I'm using a heat shrink buck connector. These are a little bit better in terms of protecting our connection against corrosion and things like that. The ones in the kit will work fine, but if you'd rather upgrade, you can always grab these here at E-Trailer. So that'll get crimped on. Get a hold of the other side here. We'll take the other end, put it over our brown wire, crimp it down. And then I can come back with a heat source and seal up the ends. So now that those ends are sealed up, we can actually hook this up to our battery. We have several different posts here. Really doesn't matter which one because they're all going to be hot. I'm just going to use this one right here since I already have some wiring hooked up to it. Uh, we'll remove that nut using a 10 millimeter socket. We can then drop our ring terminal over the stud and replace the nut. With that done up there, we can come back down under here and get some more of our lines and wiring. Uh, hooked up and ran down here. So I went ahead and uh, ran down our nylon air tubing and our vacuum line. Uh, I'll show you how I did that in a minute. But these get hooked up to the operating unit, so vacuum line's really straightforward. There's a, a check valve already attached to the operating unit, so that's just gonna push right onto it. The nylon air tube is gonna plug into a fitting on the operating unit. And really the only thing you have to watch with this is you don't want the hose to be kinked or anything. And you want the end of it to be uh, cut cleanly. So you want to use a tool like this or a pair of tubing cutters or even just the razor edge and cut it flat on a table. You don't want to use a regular pair of snips because it'll probably pinch it and potentially leak. So 
I'm just gonna cut a little bit off, inspect it, make sure it looks flat and no burrs or anything like that. And this is simply just going to push right into the fitting. You'll feel it kind of click in there, kind of pull back on it, make sure it don't come out. That's really all there is to it there. But the path that we took to get the tubing, um, the tubing here, the vacuum line, um, we also use that same path to run up the black wire and the red wire uh, from our operating unit. These two wires are gonna go up in the engine bay as well. So essentially the same as the other side, just over here, we kind of pushed everything uh, down or up through the opening uh, into the engine compartment. Up in the engine compartment, here's where our red and our black wire came up. And these will get connected to the G-Force controller wires, which we'll get to in a minute, but pretty straightforward. Black operating unit wire, this is the black G-Force controller wire. Same deal with the red. I guess we'll get to that in a moment. Um, our airline tubing and our vacuum line came up through here as well. So our uh, vacuum line runs all the way through. And there's a grommet in the firewall that'll get pushed through inside of our vehicle. And again, we'll, we'll take a better look at that in a minute because we'll use that same grommet to route our wires from our G-Force controller. Oh, but that's where that went. And then here's our vacuum line. So our vacuum line is actually gonna get teed into our factory vacuum system, which this is this will be the factory vacuum line that we're gonna tee into. So we'll go ahead, grab some tools and, uh, and get this done. So first thing we're gonna do is take our uh, T here, get that in place. There's a pretty good flat spot there on our vacuum line. I'm just gonna cut that in half. And we should be able to take our T, just kind of work that in. Pretty tight, but that's that's a good thing. You don't want any vacuum leaks. And actually, I think what I'm gonna do, since we actually have a little bit of flexibility here with our hose, this will eventually get plugged in onto that. But since we got some working room here, I might put our chuck valve in. So down here, it'll be flat again. So we'll cut that. You can take our chuck valve, uh, the clear or greenish colored side will plug in towards our T there. Black side of the chuck valve will go into the hose uh, facing the engine. Try to straighten everything out there. And the other end of our T, it plugged in. So something like that. And we can take our hose that we ran up here and cut it to length because that's just going to get plugged uh, right into there. So something like that out of work. Cut it. With these, if you kind of twist the ends around and just kind of work them, it'll be a little bit easier to plug in. I'm get that over. We'll, we'll be good to go. So now we can move to the inside of our Jeep and we're gonna be working on the driver's side uh, just underneath of our dash. So first things first, uh, we're gonna focus on our G-Force controller, which is this component here. 
Um, with these, you just want to make sure that they're mounted uh, level and straight and you want it facing the direction of travel. So you want this knob to be pointing towards the front of our Jeep. And in our case, there's actually a piece of aluminum, aluminum bracket, gave us a perfect spot to mount this thing up. So I just held it flush against there, used a couple self-tapping screws on each side to uh, secure this. There are some wires that come off the back of it, and those will run right up through a grommet into the engine compartment. Um, and so let's take a, a quick peek at that now. So this is that grommet that we talked about. Um, it's just, uh, originally there's just gonna be a piece of foam, essentially you just poke a hole through it and that's gonna allow you to run your wires and that airline tubing through it. With that in mind though, that's only gonna be there if your vehicle has an automatic transmission. If it has a standard or manual transmission, that, that opening's gonna be used and you're gonna have to find a different path, whether that entails finding another grommet or drilling a hole and making your own, uh, that'll be up to you. But that's how I got our wires from the G-Force controller into the engine compartment. And if you remember uh, from a moment ago, that nylon air tube that we ran from our operating unit, that's how we got that tube inside here to our uh, vehicle's interior. So since we were talking about the G-Force controller, we might as well just focus on it, get it all hooked up. So here's where our wires come up. Um, we're gonna have a green wire and a yellow wire from our G-Force controller. That's going to tap into your existing diode wiring. So pretty simple, you just go color for color, cut your diode wiring in half, connect a buck connector into one end of the wiring, and then you just double up the wires here. Uh, twist the two together, put them in the end of the buck connector. And to complete the circuit once again. So pretty straightforward there. The white, red, and black wire those are going to continue to run along through here. The white wire is going to be a ground. So you can tie that into your uh, existing white diode wiring. Uh, in our case, it was grounded right here. So we were able to just use a ring terminal on our white G-Force controller wire, put it to that ground stud. And then we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but that red and black wire that's going to continue to run along and that's going to get hooked up to the red and black wires coming out of your operating unit. Now what we can do is move back to our driver's side floorboard and work on getting a couple more things done. First one being our actuator cylinder here. So the way this is going to work is this is going to clamp to your brake pedal arm and um, you know, I got it up a little ways here, enough to be out of our way from our foot. You don't want to get it up super high because then it'll lose leverage and have a difficult time actually pulling that brake pedal down. So it's kind of that happy medium. Uh, you clamp it down and there's going to be a cable that's coming off the back that goes to an anchor, uh, which gets bolted to the firewall. With that said, you want that cable to be straight. Um, so make sure you, you do that. Uh, that way it has a nice line of travel and we get optimum performance from our cylinder when it is braking. And it comes with a bracket, so I use these self-tapping screws to secure the bracket to the firewall. And then ran that screw through this anchor, through the bracket, through the firewall. When you're doing this, make sure you don't drill into anything important. This whole area down here is relatively open, but still not a bad idea just to check on the engine compartment side as well. You know, you don't want to drill and do your brake booster or something like that. So uh, with that said though, the cable is supposed to have um, a little bit of uh, slack in it. So you want to be able to just slightly pull that actuator cylinder back a little bit. Um, if it's too tight, you know, it can potentially keep your brake pedal pushed down whenever you're not using the braking system. So make sure there's a little bit of slack in there to accomplish that. There's a set screw on the anchor and so you can adjust the length of the cable that set screw is going to be a four millimeter allen head bolt and so that's how you can do that but once this is all bolted up and everything and you're happy with it all you're going to do is take that uh, airline that we ran in here cut it to length and plug it into the quick connect fitting here the same way we did it on the uh, operating unit side while we're down here, we can go ahead and knock out our wireless transmitter, which is this box here. 
So this, you can just use the provided uh, sticky tape to secure it. I chose to put it right here, it's out of the way, uh, but pretty easy to get to. So there's gonna be a wire that comes off it, and that wire will break into two, a white one and a red one. The white one is gonna get hooked up to ground. So uh, lucky for us, there's actually a factory ground stud right here. So I just crimped on ring terminal, remove the nut using a 10 millimeter, slid the ring terminal over and tighten it back down. The red wire is gonna get hooked up to our brake light signal from our factory brake light switch. So we're gonna kind of work uh, over towards our brake pedal um, in that area and get that hooked up. So the red wire um, is gonna hook up to your factory stoplight signal. Uh, bear with us here, it's just so tied up here, it's a little tricky to see, so I'll do my best to explain it. But on your brake light switch, at the top of your brake pedal arm, um, there's gonna be several wires. The one you're looking for is the one that's gonna have power whenever you push down on the brake pedal. And that's gonna be white, a white wire with a brown stripe. The red wire is gonna tap into that. So you have a couple of choices. You can use the quick splice connector like I used to connect the red wire from our transmitter to that white wire with the brown stripe. Um, that's what I would suggest doing. You can cut it in half and double up on your buck connectors and, and do it that way. Uh, whatever way you see fit, um, as long as it's hooked up to that uh, brake light signal, it'll be in good shape. So now that we have everything hooked up, what we need to do is install the fuse. So you just push that into the holder. And now we can do a quick, uh, simple test just to make sure that our system is indeed uh, operating. So to do a quick test, I suggest starting your vehicle for a second, let it run maybe for 30 seconds or so, let it build up some vacuum uh, since we cut into the system. Uh, shut it off, make sure your G-Force controllers flip to the on position. And then what we can do is pull our breakaway pin here, make sure the system turns on and the brake pedal gets pushed down. But now that we verified our system is operating, what you can do if you want is just kind of clean up all your wiring, use some wire loom, zip ties, make it look pretty um, if that's what you want to do. So now that we have the Jeep side all wrapped up, we can come inside of the motorhome here and hook up our wireless coach link. So really straightforward. This one you're just going to put in a spot uh, where you want it. You do need a working 12 volt outlet and all you're going to have to do is plug it right in. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco Stay and Play supplemental braking system with the wireless coach link monitor on our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited.